My name is Shannon Morgan, and welcome to Bigfoot Encounters Narrated. In 1961, in Walker County, Texas. This happened on a ranch owned by a local family who had a grocery store in Huntsville, Texas. This is not my sighting, and I do not want to share my name or any of these names used publicly, but I felt that this information might add to the database. In 1960, my husband Teddy and two high school friends had an unusual experience in the woods outside of Huntsville, Texas. Ted passed away in 1975 and only told me the story once, shortly after we were married and when he was somewhat inebriated, as the experience was terrifying and not something he or the other boys wanted to be teased about forever. He was very technical and good on detail, so I do believe the story. One of the boy's relatives owned some land with a cabin north of town near Bidias Creek. This is where many legends are based, some like the ivory-billed woodpecker have come true, and some could still be unknown. One of Ted's friends had a ranch on a different creek, and used a pack of six leopard dogs around the house to keep his family safe. On a weekend night, the boys were bored, and it was the custom in small towns to go driving and hang out at the cabin like they had before. They parked the car on the county road as they did not have a key to the gate, and they walked about a quarter mile to the house and turned on the interior lights. The boys were talking and having a good time for an hour or so, but had the feeling that they were being watched from outside, thinking maybe some friends or rivals might have followed them and trying to play a trick. They turned out the lights and sneaked out the door from the kitchen window, from where they thought they had heard the sounds. The night was fairly clear, and there wasn't much moonlight with no outside lights, and they weren't seeing anything unusual as they crept around the cabin. Through the kitchen window, they saw the light of the open refrigerator, with a six-foot-tall plus being silhouetted in front of it. Apparently, it was drinking a bottle of ketchup. For years, the family that owned the cabin had thought that there was an old hermit living in the woods, although they had never been close enough to see him. They never found any signs of human habitation like garbage or anything, but they had seen things they might have done, and they had warned people to beware of the hermit. One of the boys yelled, The hermit! Let's get out of here! Quickly, they decided to split up, so one group could get help for the others if needed. Ted was the fastest, and in trouble with the coaches because he wanted to keep his job selling newspapers instead of running for the high school team so he took an alternate path back to the road instead of the original one used by the two other boys. Sure enough, as he tore through the brush and trees, trying to find the path in the dark, he had heard something coming behind him, and it was running faster than he was. There was a moment when Ted thought all was lost, as whatever was chasing him was so close, and he could hear it breathing. He could also smell it from 20 feet or more, worse at closer range, and it really stunk, somewhat like a moldy skunk. Then all of a sudden, he was at the road, and the two other boys were in the car waiting to pick him up, and they all drove off, totally terrified. There was nobody to report this to without getting themselves in more trouble than they needed, because they weren't supposed to bother the hermit. In retrospect, he said that this thing might have not been chasing him so much as being terrified at the yelling, and he had just chosen the same path that he had to get away. He always thought it was a teenage hermit, and when I asked why, he said he just had this feeling that it wasn't an adult, and what else could it be? I asked what kind of clothes it wore, jeans, overall, or what, and he said he didn't see any clothes because it was totally covered in long dark hair about four to six inches long all over, and he couldn't see a face. Ted was concerned that the hermit might have cut himself while he was trying to copy them drinking a Coke, because apparently he had picked up a small glass bottle of ketchup instead, and the bottle cap opener that was nailed to the wall probably didn't remove the cap, but broke the glass neck of the ketchup bottle instead. The being's size, smell, and speed were what Ted remembered the most, and he never wanted to remember it again, so I didn't ask. Even if he ever told the story to anyone else, I'm not aware of it. Probably the reason it sticks in my memory is that, at the time, I was in my first year of teaching middle school English, 
and the school had just received some motivational paperbacks for the kids. These books were so much fun to read as comic books, but they had more print and fewer pictures, and featured topics the kids were really interested in. One was about legendary creatures, such as the Abominable Snowman, but a chapter had also covered Sasquatch and Bigfoot, and these were totally new concepts to me. The cabin was in the Piney Woods Forest near a creek that is part of the Badias Creek. A number of people seemed to have think that it was an old Herman, but no one ever really saw him or found any signs that he was real. Most hermits do wear some kind of clothing and didn't have hair four to six inches all over, including the face, not to mention the far-reaching odor, and they were well over six feet tall. In October 1968, in Angelina County, Texas. On a Friday night after a date, my girlfriend and I had stopped alongside a heavily wooded dirt road that had been cleared to expand the subdivision where she had lived with her parents. The moon was full and the night was very bright. As we talked, I began to feel this odd sensation, kind of like I was being watched. Apparently, she felt something too, because we both suddenly became very quiet. I turned to look out the driver's side window of my car, and when I looked, I looked straight into the dark face of a very large, man-like, hairy creature. It had hunched down to stare at us, and it was six feet from me. The moonlight shone on the white dirt road behind it, making its silhouette very clear. The weirdest thing, as if the creature wasn't weird enough, was that its eyes, they were glowing faintly pale yellow in its dark face. This glow did not seem to be the reflection of the moonlight, as the moon was high and it was to its back. This creature's shoulders were very broad and it had no distinct neck, almost as if its shoulders had sloped up to blend into its head. Although it was stooped on one knee, it was as tall as my car. I noticed all of this in a flash, although I will never forget it, and then I quickly turned to look back at my girlfriend. When her eyes caught mine, she lost it and began to scream bloody murder. After I left her safely at her parents' house, I looked up some friends who went back with me to search for this creature. Within an hour, four of us were back waiting on the road. There was dogs barking everywhere, and we heard cattle gates being rattled across the fields beyond the woods, but we saw nothing. The next day, a friend and I returned to search for some tracks. We found none on the packed sand of the road, but we did find unusual signs in the woods. Most were indistinct due to a covering of pine straw, though. Late in the day, as we walked back towards the road, I got that same weird feeling again. I turned to look back into the woods. The sun was setting, and suddenly, I saw the creature's silhouette between the pine trees. It was following us, silently, so I whispered to my friend to look. At first he couldn't see it, so he moved back and forth to scan the thicket. The creature mimicked his movements. After it moved, my friend spotted it. Without speaking, we bolted and ran to my car and then drove off. None of us really spoke much about it afterwards, although many at our high school had heard about it and bothered all of us with questions. Except for a few friends, I seldom discuss it with anyone, even now, because no one ever really believes it. In July 1969, in Tarrant County, Texas. John, his wife, and two other couples, witnesses in a car, saw a hairy creature that resembled a satyr and it pounced onto the hood of the car with six people in it. The creature was covered with fur and it looked like a cross between a man and a goat, and the attack left scratches on the vehicle. The creature might have been offended by the group courting or possibly wanted to join in. The three couples then raced to the Fort Worth police station and reported the incident to the police. They sent four patrol cars to the site, and they found an 18-inch long scar running along the side of the car. All of the witnesses said that they had never seen the scratch before. On the 20th of July, 1969, in Palo Pinto County, Texas, a 14-year-old boy was in an area only accessible by water on the Brazos River in Palo Pinto County. 
He was one of a party of 20 campers and two counselors on a three-day, two-night canoe trip. They put in just below the dam at Possum Kingdom Lake. As they were setting up camp, some of the campers spotted some type of unknown animal, peering down at them from atop a 30-foot cliff. No one really thought much about it. The next morning, the boy's canoe and tent buddy told him that he had also seen it. The first boy knew a way to get up to the cliff face, and they were on top in no time, and they could hear something running off through the woods. They immediately gave chase, and the first boy was in the lead. There were some large boulders lying around, and he ran around one of the larger ones, but as he did so, he ran smack into a rather large tree, which knocked him right on his butt. He was crumpled at the base of the tree and dazed. When his eyes focused again, he noticed that this tree had hair. He looked up, the creature screamed, and the boy peed his pants. The friend screamed, it screamed, the boy screamed, it screamed again, and then all of this in quick and distorted time. The boys were in a blind panic and ran right off the edge of the cliff. They said that they had run into a giant gorilla, and everyone thought they were crazy and had made everything up. When the boy ran into it, he only saw it from the waist down, and he said it was covered in dark, almost black hair. If you have an encounter you'd like to share or have narrated, email me at bigfootencountersnarrated at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for listening.